In our society, music is our most popular art form. It's a huge part of our culture around the world. We listen to music in our cars, in our homes, in public. Music is everywhere and people talk about it. My name is Asphyxia and I am a deaf artist, writer and activist. Even though I'm deaf, I really love music and I don't want to miss out on this beautiful art form. While most activities like visual art, computing and language largely work in only one hemisphere of the brain, music is one of the few activities that stimulates both sides of the brain. It can strengthen neural networks. It's a good workout for the brain. Research has shown that listening to music can reduce anxiety, blood pressure, and pain, as well as improve sleep quality, mental alertness, and memory. It can give us energy while we do tedious tasks, and it can have a powerful influence on our mood, helping us to feel brighter or calmer. But what about deaf and hard of hearing people? Is it possible for us to experience these benefits and be included in our cultural love for music? We've found ways to access TV through captions and doorbells with flashing lights, but we have not established a way to access music. Is it even possible? That's what I'm exploring. By the way, in this talk, the captions show the word deaf, which refers to the medical condition of having a hearing loss and includes all levels of loss, from mild to total. With this word, I include the entire spectrum of identities, such as deaf with a capital D, hard of hearing, and hearing impaired. Now back to the brain. When people experience vibrations, a specific region in the brain is activated. What's interesting is that when deaf people experience vibrations, the part of the brain that processes music is also activated, both sides of the brain. We experience and respond to vibrations just as if we were hearing sound. For us, vibrations can feel magical and transportative in the same way that music can affect hearing people. Researching how deaf people access music around the world, the key methods seem to be feeling it through vibrations, seeing it, which is typically achieved with sign language or perhaps by reading sheet music, memorising it so it can be danced or signed to. People with mild to severe hearing loss also hear it, though parts of the song may be unclear. Most valued by deaf people is feeling it through vibrations, which makes sense given what we know about how our brains experience vibrations. For this reason, songs are often selected that have a strong bass and beat. When I go to a nightclub where there are subwoofers, I really love feeling the beat of the music as it pulses through me. The vibrations are exquisite. However, they are also a bit monotonous. Every song sounds the same. It's a bit boring. This is because we only feel part of the music, the bass and some of the drums. There are many parts not communicated through vibrations the melody and other higher pitched instruments, such as piano and guitar, are lost. Deaf people enjoy music that has a strong bass and beat. What does not seem to be considered is the idea of changing the music itself to give a more satisfying and powerful vibrational experience, 
This is an area I have been working on. So I've been designing vibrations that go with music, which enable us to feel the melody. So we can feel the lyrics as they are sung, as well as feeling instrumental melodies such as a guitar riff. Deaf people have told me they could clearly feel the words and that the overall experience feels more like a real song. For myself, if I've memorized the words to a song, then with the vibrations, I can sign along or sing the words to myself in my head, keeping time with the music. It's deeply satisfying. I don't need to hear the words to enjoy them. The way deaf people experience the mood of a song is different to hearing people too. You may be familiar with the idea that music in a major key sounds joyful, while music in a minor key sounds sad or melancholy. What exactly influences the mood of a major and minor key? It's the choice of notes. To change a song from happy to sad, you would move a particular note down by one semitone. But perceiving a different emotional experience from this change relies on the ability to identify pitches. Pitch identification is an area that deaf people seem to struggle with. Hearing aids and cochlear implants make pitch identification impossible. These devices are designed to help us understand speech and they work hard to manipulate sound on the fly, reducing background noise and turning up speech type noise to make it easier for us to follow conversation. All the manipulation of sound means that pitches are not represented consistently. Hearing a note in one environment can sound completely different to hearing the same note in a different environment, depending on what other sounds are happening at the same time. Without the ability to identify pitches, our interpretation of the mood of music can be completely different to that of hearing people. For us, the mood is influenced by things like the tempo, the lyrics, the rhythm, and the choice of instruments. As well as the associations we have created for those types of sounds. Perhaps we've heard something similar in the soundtrack to a scary movie, so it will create that sort of mood in us when we hear it again. Pitch identification must not be confused with pitch discrimination, which is the ability to tell when notes are going up or down. Even if we can't identify a note, many of us can still hear if a melody is rising or falling and take great pleasure from that. Also, it is possible for deaf people to learn to identify pitches by feeling the vibrations of instruments directly, though this takes a lot of practice. It is well known that we deaf people struggle with background noise. That's because hearing aids and cochlear implants do not allow us to selectively hear. Hearing people can choose. I want to tune into this sound and ignore these other sounds. But for us, all those sounds are flattened and we can't mentally separate them. This becomes an issue for us in listening to music. Sometimes we can hear the introduction to a song when there's just one or two instruments. But when the song builds with more and more instruments added, all the sounds can blend together and become a confusing mess. Just as we do better when we eliminate background noise, we can also hear music more clearly when we limit the number of instruments we are hearing at a time. Hearing aids and cochlear implants have some other surprising effects on music. 
One example is with the drums. In a typical rock or pop song, the drummer alternates between a kick drum and a snare drum like this. This gives us a down up feel, which makes us want to dance. We go down with the kick and up with the snare. Usually at the same time, the drummer will also play the hi-hat. But here's something interesting. I can't really hear the hi-hat, but when it plays at the same time as the kick and snare, I lose the down-up feeling of the kick and snare. My hearing aids distort the sound. Hi-hats are closer to the sound of speech than the kick and snare, so my hearing aids respond by turning up the hi-hat and turning down the kick and snare. The rhythm is lost and I can't dance along. Part of making music accessible is to remove the hi-hats or to give us control over them so we can adjust the sound they make. And that leads me to another important element of making music accessible, giving us control over what we hear. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to making the best sound experience for a person with hearing loss. This is because some of us can hear low notes, some can hear high, while others have what is known as a cookie bite loss, which means you can't hear middle pitches. I can only hear low notes, so I've been using computer music software to recreate songs and move the notes down into a range that I can hear. The result is amazing. I can hear the songs really clearly. To give you an idea of what is possible, if you have some hearing above 100 decibels on your audiogram, you should be able to hear music clearly. Below that, whether you can hear well enough depends a lot on your hearing aids or cochlear implant. But even if the music is not clear, vibrations and visuals can still provide access. The red line shows the only hearing I have in range. As you can see, it's a tiny corner of sound. And yet, music that has been adjusted to my requirements sounds clear and magical to me. One thing I have discovered from working with computer music software is that the visuals showing each note is very useful. Remember I said that we cannot selectively hear? It is difficult for me to focus on, say, just the vocal melody to understand it. With the computer software, I can turn off everything else and listen to the vocals by themselves, watching a visual of how the notes go up and down. The visual guide helps me to hear it better. Then when I play the song with the backing music included, the vocals are clearer than before. Doing this trains my brain to understand how to hear the vocals. I can do this with each instrument. And then when I put them all together, I can hear them much better. Through this process, a song can become enjoyable to me with a combination of sounds that are clearer. My research shows that 86% of deaf people would like a visual guide to what is happening in music. Seeing helps us hear better. However, the computer software that enables us to see and edit music is not easy to use. I believe we need an app that is made specifically for deaf people, which makes it easy to see and edit music. Rather than making do with music that is made for hearing people, it is my conclusion that to make music truly accessible to deaf people, we need to recreate it in a new form that is designed for us. Blind people use Braille, a language that can be felt. Books are converted into Braille to make them accessible. I believe we need to do the musical equivalent of this for us. Design a new format for music that truly suits deaf people, 
convert songs into that format and provide an easy app that lets us see and edit songs in that format. The new format of music needs to include a fantastic vibrational experience that conveys the lyrics and is a complete and satisfying experience, even if there is no sound at all. An altered combination of sounds that work well with hearing aids and cochlear implants so that they don't turn into a confusing mess. The ability to see what is happening, every note on every instrument and the lyrics as they occur. The ability to learn the contents of a song by listening to only one instrument at a time. Conveying mood through other aspects of the music, such as tempo, rhythm and lyrics, not just pitch. The ability to edit music to our own range, so that those of us who hear high sounds can edit the song to move it up, and those who can only hear low sounds can edit it to move it down into our range. I have experimented with these elements on myself and other deaf people, and it appears that this combination of steps does make music accessible for all levels of hearing loss. Having worked this out, I could not sit on this knowledge and do nothing with it. So I decided to make accessible music available to everyone. It's called Amplio. Amplio is like Spotify for deaf people. It's an app that lets us see and edit music. With the app comes a library of songs that have the sound designed for hearing aids and cochlear implants. If you plug in a haptic device, you'll be able to feel vibrations that are created to be a fantastic experience for deaf people. I am very excited about what might happen next once we have good quality access to music. My research into deaf people and music has given me a surprising statistic. 60% of us would like to make music, but don't know how. With the ability to access songs properly through Amplio, we open the door for deaf people to easily learn to compose music. I envisage we could create a whole new field of music that is tailored to our needs. We'll write mood into music our own way break the rules of hearing people music and create our own. We could have charts showing hits we have written. Music by deaf artists for deaf consumers. We'll have our own version of the Grammy Awards and all the judges will be deaf. We'll be selecting songs based on Best vibrational experience, the best audio experience for all levels of hearing loss, the best sign language interpretation that transports us magically. Please help me make this vision happen. Tell your deaf friends about Amplio. If you have a hearing loss yourself, jump online and give accessible music a try. With many of us involved, we can make this vision come true. The Amplio prototype will be ready in May. I would love for you to try it and let me know how it works for you. To be notified when it's available, sign up at ampliomusic.com.